Hello and welcome to This Is My Code. I'm Todd and today I'm joined by Paul from Veracode. Paul, welcome. Thanks for having me, Todd. Paul, can you tell us a little bit about what Veracode does? Sure. Uh, Veracode looks for security defects that are presented in software. Uh, we're, we're helping customers to remove that, that risk so that we keep those applications safe and secure. Okay, great. And today we'll be talking about um, a couple different ways that you guys do just that. Yeah, sure. So it all starts here, the Veracode platform. The developer uh, will perhaps uh, automatically up upload via, say, a CI, uh, GitLab, GitHub, whatever that might be, uh, Jenkins, to automatically uh, send a binary to, to the Veracode platform where the analysis starts. And we've got scheduled Lambda functions here, which are interacting uh, with the binaries. And you've got to think about how many are coming through every second. An awful an awful lot of, of uh, binary information, different packages are being, are being hit uh, and being presented to the Veracode platform. So scheduled Lambda functions are spinning up EC2 instances of various sizes uh, to deal with that complexity. And so if you think about building up a, a, a graph of the software so that we can then look for the vulnerabilities, that relies on just awesome compute power. Uh, so we need, in some cases, the very largest images that you guys can present to us. Um, so the analysis takes, pl takes place here. Maybe within a few seconds or minutes, the, uh, the developer will then get the results back. Uh, so that they, they can, can look at those that information either in the Veracode platform or maybe uh, via, say, Jira in their defect tracking uh, system. The results go into the DynamoDB, and of course we store state information about the process, about the uh, the state of, of that of that analysis. And at rest, we put the binaries into the S3 uh, bucket, and we're using the the KMS system uh, here to ensure that at rest the binary is super secure, it's encrypted at rest. Uh, so, and that's unique to to the uh, to the customer. Uh, so, uh, no binary is uh, the, the private key is not shared with any other customer. So that's on the the very code side to make sure that we're kind of having the ability uh, at super scale to to be able to analyze uh, applications. Um, and, uh, and make sure we, we're giving timely, timely results back to customers. So the platform, Veracode itself, will accept uh, any type of uploads via any traditional CI, CD types of tools and pipelines that a developer might already be using today. Yeah, indeed. Uh, also in the IDE, so with the likes of uh, you know, Eclipse, IntelliJ, uh, visual code, uh, command line, using our wrappers, you can actually, if we don't support the, the, uh, the, the actual tool, you can use the command line and the wrappers to, you know, to send that, that information up to the record platform. So there's really no, no end of, of different parts of the tool chain which you can uh, integrate with, with the record platform. So it sounds like flexibility of choice to get it into the Veracode platform. And then really from there, what I, what I liked about the talk track was that um, you're really giving the ability to leverage all of the compute power for scans at scale and storing all the state information in a non-relational database such as DynamoDB. Yes, very much so. And if you think about um, how this would have been would have taken place in the past, maybe you wouldn't be scanning for security defects, or you'd rely on a manual penetration tester to uh, provide a report and say a PDF document, which is incredibly difficult to, to use. Or maybe you had an on-premise tool on your laptop, and as that's scanning, it's actually getting in the way of you actually writing code. So the alternative here with a Veracode platform, which is in the cloud, is to take all of that, to abstract all of that away from the developer so that they can get on doing what they need to do, which is writing code, and then getting the results back within, within seconds. And as you say, well, you know, there are uh, just such a, an awesome amount of data which is going into, into the DynamoDB. We've actually scanned 10 and a half trillion lines of code over our 13 years of existence. So there's just such a huge reliance on, on data and compute power on this side. Definitely a lot of code that you guys have scanned. And one of the things that stood out to me is that this is automated, and it's you're returning results in just seconds. So from a developer perspective, someone who traditionally has done all of these steps locally and manually is now given an easy button of sort. Yeah, and uh, in the past it would have taken days, if, if not weeks, to, to you know get that, get hold of that pen test report. As you mentioned today, it's, it's seconds or minutes to be able to uh, get your hands again via the, the platform or via your your tool chain and be able to pinpoint the the issues which you need to to deal with there and then. And one of the benefits of of having everything in the cloud, where you have actually you know a, a kind of uh, you know a feedback loop which is central to all of this, is that if there is a false positive identified. 
and then we correct that issue. So we, we tune the, the engine to, to actually be able to be more precise. Not just you as a customer or as a, de a developer actually benefits from that, but everyone in the world develops from, uh, will benefit from that. So that's, uh, you know, that's something which is central to the principle of DevOps, of, of having that, that sort of continuous feedback loop embedded in, 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 in the process. So it's actually learning, getting better over time. As yes. new information flows in and more customers adopt it, the scans uh, have a higher percentage of being more and more accurate. Precisely. Compare that to the on-premise model, which is kind of security 1.0. This is the future, I'd say. Sure, sure. So on the other side, we also have open source. And I'm assuming this is some type of vulnerability scanning that's happening, which is part of the Veracode platform as well. Can you walk us through what that flow looks like? Yeah, sure. So um, just to con sort of contrast, st static analysis is really dedicated to the, the code which you write as, as a developer, what we call the first party code. That's typically about 10% of the application. 90%, the, the balance of that application is written by other developers outside of your organization. So what we're doing here is to use Batch to take information from the internet. Uh, and what I mean by that are sources such as uh, Jira, GitLab, GitHub, uh, basically repos of information, not necessarily code, but where commits, uh, commit information has been sent back or uh, defect tickets have been raised. We've taken that, uh, that amount of that information that we've, we've, we're kind of able to scour across the internet using Batch and then pump that through spinning up uh, ML uh, machine learning uh, pipelines, both uh, deep learning AMIs, but deep learning containers also increasingly, so that we're able to, to use machine learning uh, to uh, assess whether or not the, the information which is being presented uh, to us is a true positive. So, of course, we have to train the machine learning models to, to increase accuracy using tens of thousands of data points. And we've got to a point now after, after three million uh, uh, you know, analysis of uh, components out there on, on the internet to, to be 1% uh, uh, accurate in terms of the, the false positive rate. So 99% of the, of, the, of the results are, are absolutely true, true positives. And that means that you can do this at scale without having to rely on an army, a battalion of humans uh, giving you that, that high fidelity which developers crave. And I was going to say, scale is probably the biggest aspect of this because ultimately we cannot manually go out there by ourselves and look at all the commits that have happened on GitHub. It's just not feasible. Yes. So leveraging machine learning in order to do that at scale is a very powerful aspect here. Indeed. Uh, so there are many different vendors out there that, that do something similar, uh, or, or at least they present to the developer known vulnerabilities that exist in open source components. So there's the National Vulnerability Database that has this kind of information. The downside of, of just relying on that type of public uh, you know, repo of information is that you only see 70% of the vulnerabilities. So we found that using this process, machine learning, uh, coupled with just the, uh, I guess the, the scalability that you guys provide to us, we can uh, actually identify another 30% extra uh, of vulnerabilities, uh, being able to take what really should be publicly known vulnerabilities, but aren't necessarily disclosed. And actually, in the case of Go and JavaScript, we found that we can augment what is known out there amongst the public uh, to add on another 80% of vulnerabilities, which is just huge. And when you think about the popularity of JavaScript these days, that's incredibly important. If, you, if you're using jQuery uh, in your UX, you want to know which, which libraries are just a no-no, which are bad to use. Yeah, and I guess a question that I had just looking at this architecture is how exactly does the vulnerability scanning kick off? Is this also? similar to the automated and the static analysis that's happening. Is this kicked off via a scheduled Lambda job as well? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, this is uh, exactly the case. So we're, we're continuously throughout the day and night going out there onto the internet. If you think about how this information is, is, is being populated into these public repos, GitLab, Jira, it's, it's happening all the time. So therefore, we need 24 by 7 operations to be able to pull back that information, process it in real time, and then bring that back to, to the Verico platform. So if you're using a certain amount, you know, different libraries in your software, and if unless you're atypical, you will be, uh, okay. most developers are. So you need to be able to provide a heat map and be able to pinpoint across your, your inventory or just your application uh, which components or, say, microservices are vulnerable so that you can then address those. And one of the cool things about the technology, uh, in, in combination of what we see here, is we don't just tell you about the theoretical vulnerabilities. We can, uh, from the, effectively from the, from the first party code, uh, draw a line of sight to, to the known risky function that exists in that component and be able to say to you, look, the other thing is, let's get to those in the fullness of time, but you've got to fix this, this uh, exploitable vulnerability today. 
essentially prioritizing what needs immediate attention. Precisely, and that's incredibly um, you know, attractive to developers who are pressed for time and want to know what do I definitely need to fix today so we can push to production. Awesome, machine learning at scale for open source vulnerability scanning, and then the easy button again for developers to get feedback immediately on the static code analysis that's happening immediately as in a few, just a few seconds. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Paul, for joining us. Thanks, Todd, my pleasure. And thank you for watching. This is my code.